everybody, this is Joel Hoekstra of Whitesnake. Welcome back to the second installment of the School of Rock. So great to be back here at Guitar World. Uh, you know, it hit me that there's an awful lot of lessons on lead stuff in the magazine. And, uh, you know, in the reality, when you're in a rock band, 95% of what you're doing is playing rhythm guitar. So this time around, I wanted to incorporate a little bit of rhythm guitar. And that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I just wanted to start with uh, working with sus twos and sus fours on G chords and giving you guys some options. Now, what the heck am I talking about for those that don't know theory with sus two and sus four? Well, a major chord is built off of three notes, the first, third, and fifth tones of a major scale. So if I played a G major scale, the triad, or the three notes in a G major chord, are G, B, the third note, and D, the fifth note, okay? So anytime you're playing a G chord, any of those ones you've learned over the years, you know, or whatever you've learned uh, in terms of your, your G chords, you're always playing a combination of those three notes, G, B, and D. That's the triad, okay? The first, third, and fifth notes of the scale. Now today, I want to work on taking the third and moving that to either a second, the second note of the scale, which is an A, or the fourth note of the scale, which is a C, okay? And hence the term sus2 or sus4, okay? And sus implying that it will resolve. Uh, but let's get started here. I don't want to bore you with too much theory. Uh, I gave you guys a lot of options in terms of just two notes uh, working your way up from low to high here, okay? So I want to start on the low G, and we're going to work with sus2 being this A note right here, the open A. And then I want to go to the third being on the A string, and the fourth being on the third fret of the A string. Okay, so together, now obviously you can do all kinds of stuff with this, and these are not meant to be played as they're written with just the four straight in a row, you can riff with it, okay? So we could play, you could palm mute. Okay, that's a great place to start. Or palm mute with accents. Okay, drone picking, which more, is more for the higher stuff. We'll get to that later. Um, you know, that's a, just a great place to start. Just take those, take those four notes and work on riffing, see what we can come up with, okay? You might be able to... And it could also come off of playing a G chord first. You could play a G power chord and then find yourself in a sus2 or sus4 riff, okay? Moving up, I actually lose the G note, believe it or not. I'm going to put a D note on top here. And here's going to be our sus2 to three to sus4 back to three. So. Okay. Feel free to just mess around with that and find what you can. The next one is going to be the G note here on the D string. And we're going to get that sus2 to 3. Okay, something else that's really cool is, is just trying to finger pick like staccato. I'm going to take like two fingers off of my right hand instead of picking it. And just... That works great when you go up high with some of these. That We're going to continue to climb the neck. I'll get back to that. Um, but anyway, feel free to riff around with that. The next one is working here on the, that fifth fret on the D again, but we're going to put the sus2 to 3 on the G string above it. You know, music. is everything I'm showing you here right now, you can immediately think of as just a G chord. That's it, okay? Uh, to, to go with the theory, anytime you have a one chord or a five chord in a key, all this stuff works with the standard sus2 back to three or sus4 to three, okay? Um, 
Continuing climbing up, we're going to go to the seventh fret here on the G string is going to be the D note. And so it's basically an octave higher than the second pattern I gave you. We're just moving that up. To also, you know, you could hammer these on. Kind of goes back to some of that Jimi Hendrix inspired riffing I did in one of my lessons on the first installment of these, but. It's just think of all this stuff as a G chord. I think it'll really expand your rhythm playing. Uh, we're going to get a little tricky here. Pinky on G, eighth fret on the B string, OK? And this is the only time there's a string skip. To get to the sus2, I'm going to go to the seventh fret there on the D. OK? Even just that is kind of a. Anytime, you know, if the other guitar player in your band is. And that's an important thing to remember. When, you, when it comes to this stuff, uh, in a two guitar situation, you always kind of want to find the other territory. So like if one guy's down there holding down the fort with a low G, you know, you should be immediately thinking, well, I could get up, you know. Anywhere up high and out of the range of where the other guy's playing. That helps the guitar parts sit really well together. Another thing with this stuff is it's great to remember to fill the gaps with like a vocalist. If you're in a band, assuming we're a, you know, you have a singer, if he's gonna sing his line, a great spot to play your riff with some of this stuff is between that. So, you know, you could let a G chord ring, vocal phrase here, and then it could be. something like that as, as like a response to what the vocal would sing, okay? In terms of rhythm guitar, it's a very important thing to remember to stay out of the way of the vocal. In general, my philosophy with that is that if the singer's singing, that's what, you know, 99% of people are tuning into that. So the best is to kind of clear way for that, you know, make your rhythm playing simple. And then when there's a gap, they need something to listen to, right? What's it gonna be? Is it gonna be a drum fill? Is it gonna be a keyboard fill? Or is it gonna be a rhythm guitar fill? Or a lead guitar fill, you know? that's. In general, learning to fill the gaps with this stuff is a very important art form that I think, um, you know, comes with years of experience of playing in bands and learning songs, but you begin to find it instinctually. Okay, I digress. Moving on here, man, on these two note things, we're going to go to eight on the B, and we're going to find the sus two on the high E, the three. Okay, all right. Okay, this is again, now getting into some of that where I talked about the drone picking. This is great, you know, choruses in general are gonna have more legato sounding parts. Uh, legato meaning notes connected than verses. Verses can be more of that palm beauty. Okay, but then when the chorus comes around. You know, you might. So all this stuff, just in general, if you're thinking G, can provide, I guess what a lot of uh, musicians will call a lift in a chorus, especially when you get up high. These higher parts coming in, just kind of droning, can be uh, a, a great thing in a song. And a lot of times it's just simple stuff like this that'll make the difference in a song sounding pleasing to people or not. Okay, continuing up. First finger on 10 on the high E, and we're gonna find our sus two to three, sus four to three right here. Okay, continuing on up, getting 15 on the high E, getting sus2 here on the G. You know, maybe a good second part in a chorus if the other guitar plays. You know, mess around with any of these. These are all conceptual in nature, as all my lessons I try to keep in this in the magazine. This is for your guys to you know find you guys to find your own thing uh, with them. Okay, You're, it's not meant to be played note for note. 
Okay, so the next section of going sus4, I, I reversed the process just so we didn't get sick of hearing 2, 3, 4, 3, is going sus4. So I'm gonna play a G power chord. And I'm gonna add a note. So we're going to three notes essentially at a time instead of two, okay? I just wanna get the sus4 here on the G string, the fifth fret, then the fourth, and now I have to switch fingerings to be able to get the sus2. So I'm gonna grab my power chord there with the middle and the pinky. Okay. There, if you notice, I kind of riffed off of the sus2 to the resolve, holding that power chord still like that. Okay, the next one, I'm actually gonna cheat for a minute just because I thought it sounded cool. I'm gonna keep the third in. Remember the idea was that when you're sussing a chord, sus2 or sus4, you're taking that third away. You have basically the power chord, the one and the five. Anyway, this next one, I'm gonna keep the third in the bass. So I'm gonna get the second fret on the A, and I'm gonna get the fifth fret on the D, and the fifth on the G. And there's our sus4 to three, sus2, all that movement on the G. So, you know, it's funny, a lot of people don't necessarily know the name of this thing. A lot of hard rock players I've found where they'll play, you know. When you play those coming off of power chords where you drop your first finger, that's really just playing the third in the bass and your top note would be the name of the chord. So like right here when I'm playing that, that is a G chord with B in the bass. So it'd be G over B. Okay, so let's move that sus4 to the resolve of three. And now that we're into three notes, it might be smarter to think about arpeggiating some of this stuff like. You've got some longer options in terms of rhythm parts. Okay, moving on here, here's the, the G triad would be here, fifth on the D, four on the G, and three on the B. We're gonna get our four right here. You know, one of the most popular ones, actually. Okay, and I can't stress enough, you know, if the other guys... Essentially, you're just jamming on G. That's all that stuff comes down to. So, anyway, arpeggiate, do the finger-picking thing that we talked about. You know. I'm gonna do that on the next one up here as well. So we're getting eight on the B. Seven on the G, and here's our four, three, two, three here on the, uh, in terms of the intervals on the D string. So 10th fret to ninth, seventh to ninth. Okay, hopefully just you come up with some of your own riffs off of this stuff. I just thought it would be a fun lesson for you guys to just go ahead and lay down some power chords, G stuff with a you know, drum loop going and riff away on this stuff. See what you get. Next one up here is going to be basically just taking the 12th fret on the D, G, and B strings, okay? Part of this chord, right? And our sus4 would happen by moving on the B string to 13, back to 12, to 10, back up to 12. Okay. Moving one string higher, we're gonna get the 10th fret on the high E. We're gonna get the 12th on the G and our movement for that sus4 is still right there on that B. Okay, and then way up here, I just want to get barring on the 15th fret on the B and E. 
And our movement is gonna happen here on the G, going from 17 to 16. So it's pretty amazing when you think that really we've only covered a G chord here with all this stuff, right? So, you know, your next step, obviously, if you have to jam and start familiarizing yourself with all of these, is to move it around. So like, what about jamming G to D, like grabbing this main G that we were talking about here and just... So obviously I'm just going G to D right there. And that takes you a long way from maybe some of the, the guys out there who are just... Those two will lock together brilliantly if you get one person to hold down the fort with the power chords. And again, you know, try and think about the verse. for more of a chorus thing or thinking about like whatever you're feeling but I you know practicing these sus chords with major chords I think is a great step in rhythm guitar playing hopefully you guys will invent the next great classic rock riff anyway for now thank you so much Honored to be here at Guitar World. Hope you guys dig the lesson. Thank you so much for the support.